hello and welcome to episode number 250 of Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and as you can see I like to set myself challenges on these milestone videos. I've got here a Magnum PI Ferrari 308 GTS, the star car of the show, hence the intro if you missed the link. These models were produced by Corgi in the 1980s, but mine has certainly seen better days, this being how it should look, with this being a real Ferrari 308 GTS. As you saw in the intro, mine has some significant issues. Once I've removed all five of the burrs of the rivets, I can take a look inside and reveal all. It has certainly spent some time in the dirt, with mud evident pretty much everywhere. The axles were simply ground to dust. The black plastic that forms the grille had fused itself to the body. While flailing that around, the cracked windscreen comes loose. That's not in a good state at all, but lacking a replacement, I'm going to give it my all and try to make the best I can of it. I eventually free up the seating, which really only needs a clean. I'll also be lightly customising it to improve the look. Finally, I have the black plastic part free. This forms the front grille, engine cover vents, dashboard, and it should also have a steering wheel. That I'll need to replace. The cast metal will definitely have some corrosion, so I will absolutely have a task on my hands with this custom. The Ferrari 308 was made famous by the TV series Magnum PI, in which lead character Thomas Magnum, played by Tom Selleck, drove the car around Oahu, Hawaii for eight seasons between 1980 and 1988. The series utilised several 308 GTS cars, a new one for each season, all with the licence plate Robin 1. The first season used a 1979 308 GTS. This era of 308 is what the Corgi casting is based on. You are able to tell as the later GTS i models had a larger and connecting engine cover vent. Seasons 2 to 6 utilised a GTS i 308 from 1981, while seasons 7 and 8 used a GTS i Quattro Valvole from 1984. Again, this is distinguished by an additional grille, this time on the hood to aid radiator exhaust exit. Before it was famous, the 308 had been introduced at the 1975 Paris Motor Show as the 308 GTB. It was a V8 powered, mid-engined Berlinetta sports car that replaced the Dino 246 GT and GTS. It was constructed very similarly to the Dino 308 GT4, except for a shortened wheelbase. The GT4 was a 2 plus 2, while the 308 GTB was a two-seater only. All models had a 5-speed manual gearbox, limited slip differential, double wishbone independent suspension, and vented disc brakes all round. The body of the 308 was designed by Leonardo Fioravanti of Pininfarina. He was responsible for the Dino, Daytona, and Berlinetta Boxer. The 308's 2.9-litre V8 produced 252 brake horsepower in European cars. Notably, early GTBs were made of glass-reinforced plastic, until a switch to steel in 1977. That year, the Targa topped 308 GTS was introduced at the Frankfurt Motor Show. 3,219 GTSs and 2,897 GTBs were made between 1975 and 1980. Of the GTBs, only 808 were fiberglass bodied, none were GTS models. Fuel injection was offered on the 308 in 1980, resulting in the new GTBI and GTSI names. While emissions decreased, power followed, down to 211 brake horsepower on Eurospec cars. 494 GTBIs and 1743 GTSIs were made. The 308 Quattro Valvole arrived in 1982 with the main change suggested in its name, four valves per cylinder. Quattro Valvole being Italian for four valves. Power was back up to 240 horsepower. It lasted for three years until 1985 when it was replaced by the Ferrari 328. 3,042 GTS models were built with only 748 GTB examples. Ferrari did offer a 2 litre version of the GTB and GTS in 1980 called the 208. 
These were intended for the Italian domestic market due to the higher tax band of 38% instead of 18 for cars with engines greater than 2 litres. It was regarded as the slowest Ferrari ever sold with its tiny V8, though it proved faster than the 208 GT4. Only 300 were built of either variety. 1982 also saw the launch of the 208 GTB Turbo, the first ever turbocharged road-going Ferrari. A GTS version followed in 1983. Production ended in 1985 with the launch of the 328. 437 GTB turbos and 250 GTS turbos were built. The 308 GTB had a career in rallying, operated by Giuliano Michelotto. While Michelotto was independent of Ferrari, the cars were developed in close collaboration with Ferrari factory engineers. Group 4 spec GTBs were first constructed in 1978, with Ferrari supplying bare chassis and engines to Michelotto. A roll cage was added and the engine bay modified. The engines were tuned to between 288 and 330 brake horsepower. The bodies were made from fiberglass and Kevlar. 11 of these Group 4 spec cars were made. These competed in rallies up until 1983. A 308 won the 1981 Targa Florio and Tour de France Automobile. With the introduction of Group B rules in 1982, Michelotto set about building cars to the new regulations. Four were built. They initially used the original engines before adopting the QV units. These cars were additionally equipped with a quick replacement gearbox. Body panels returned to being made from steel and fiberglass to adhere to the rules. It was homologated and allowed to race in 1983, where it won regionally on several occasions. Another development was the 308 GTM, built to compete under Group B Evolution rules. Development had begun in 1982, with both Ferrari and Michelotto convinced the 308 would be competitive in Group B. It would use a new tubular frame steel chassis and a 3 litre 308 QV engine, longitudinally mounted in the rear mid position, producing 363 to 370 brake horsepower. It remained rear wheel drive only and it had a Formula One style clutch. The body again featured Kevlar and carbon fibre too, with the final bodywork resembling the Ferrari 512BB LM. Its headlights were fixed, as was the large rear spoiler. The car weighed just 840 kilograms. It lapped Ferrari's Fiorano test track faster than the BB LM and the F40. Three chassis were built, but only two ever competed in rallies. These were only local events. One of the three cars was even converted to a road car, so its Group B credentials were never proven. With that, it's now time to reassemble my GTS. I've really done all I could to make the window piece look passable, despite the big crack in it. The black plastic piece has been revitalised and gets a new steering wheel. The interior goes in between the black plastic piece and body. It's all rather fiddly. Then I can reacquaint the body and base with those five thin rivets able to connect the two without gluing or tapping. Here's a reminder just how bad my Corgi Ferrari 308 GTS looked when I found it. The missing wheel was giving it a unique stance on the turntable. There was evidence of mud on every surface and inside too. The rear axle had completely perished. That windscreen I needed to improve on as I had no available replacements, so I've done as much as I could with it. So let's take a look at it after all of my fixes. Firstly, the paint. It was suffering a little corrosion having been damp and muddy for such a prolonged period. It's come out looking beautifully smooth after a few coats of thick Tamiya primer and some filing and sanding. On this gorgeous red base, I could then add in the trim detailing. The wheels are something else. The diecast detail shop on Facebook never lets me down. I'll leave a link in the description. And a word on the windshield. I've washed it, polished it, dunked it in that thick humbral gloss and given it a thick black surround as the real car had. It isn't perfect, but I think I've made the most of a bad situation. Let me know what you think in the comments and please leave a like if you enjoyed this one. Be sure you are subscribed to the channel to keep up with all the latest restos and customs from me, 
But all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.